Good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to what once was called the uh, Monday Morning Sidewalk video. I think we're going to kind of strip this one out away from the Monday Morning Sidewalk, seeing as it's Tuesday, and go on from there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a, a fly report to you, Texas fly report, and it's based on uh, things I can glean on the internet from different guides. A lot of these guides these days um, put all their information, their most current stuff, because it's the easiest thing to do rather than alter their website, is to put it on Facebook. Facebook has become, it's for better or worse, in my opinion worse, a, uh, a little micro internet within the internet where um, there's a repository of, of current information and photographs that allow someone who wants to fly fish in Texas allows them to see and know what's going on with a particular guy in a particular place. Um, as you may know from some of the things I've written, just got back from Port O'Connor, Texas, and it was a it was a decent trip. I mean, I'm always enjoy that place. Always enjoy the salt, of course. Um, what it seemed like was that the water was pretty hot, and of course, when I got back here, it was extremely hot here in North Texas as well. So, no matter where you're watching from, in the state of Texas or wherever you are in the world watching. Um, I'm based in North Texas, north of Dallas-Fort Worth, although I travel a lot to try and bring you guys this information. Um, on the, you know, right now in Texas, we got high pressure and, and definitely a lot of heat settling in right at 100 degrees probably the last three or four days here in North Texas. And what that does on the, the coast, you know, it gets hot there too. Um, it uh, kind of forces, you know, the, the water gets so hot on the flats that it kind of you know, pushes the, the game fish we like, redfish, and even now, you know, on this last trip I caught black drum and sheep's head on fly, um, pushes them off of the off of the flats as the water's down on low tides. Um, of course, you always want to fish a moving tide, and and depending on what time of day um, those occur, that that really has a huge effect on your luck. Uh, one of the places I look for information for tides and and moon and, and charts is uh, the uh, Texas Saltwater Fishing Magazine. You can either see those online on their website or you can buy the magazine which is still to me a, pretty much a bargain at like four dollars at newsstands. Um, you'll find that magazine a lot more prevalent on the coast than you find it here. Anyway, there's a story coming out on Port O'Connor. It's written in a different style. It's coming out you know, over several parts. It's kind of like a short story, book short story but will be stretched out over some multiple posts because uh, it's long for the internet. It's kind of just short for, for print, but anyway, hope you enjoy that. Uh, at the end of all these, you know, we're kind of stripping this away from, from the Monday morning sidewalk to this week because it's definitely not Monday morning anymore. It's more of a Texas guide report. I hope that um, these guides that I kind of gleaned information from off of Facebook uh, don't mind. I give all these guys credit for their information, their knowledge, and they're and they're putting these things out so that um, maybe that's you know just to uh, attract business or just to show great photography. A lot of these guys are really good photographers, um, but regardless, the information is always credited to the source. And if uh, any of you guys out there are watching and don't get credit for information, please let me know right away and I'll fix that. So let me go right ahead to the report and of course hang in there till the end because at the end. I've got one tip for you, and this one that saved my bacon out on the coast this past week. Uh, without this tip, uh, I would have had a really difficult time. So stick with me. Let me read this report to you, and we'll go from there. As I was saying, I gleaned these from across the state from a, a, a mixed kind of freshness. Some of these reports uh, and entries, they're all, all mostly all on Facebook because it's easier for these guys to put something on Facebook than it is to put it, change their website. Um, which is kind of doing a deal with the devil in my opinion, but that's the way it goes. And, uh, the first guy I want to want to mention is some guy is, is a guy that I uh, I don't talk about a whole lot, but I think he's really tuned in here in North Texas on Lake Texoma, and that's Steve Hollinshead. He's an Orvis guide. Um, I met him a few times, never fished with him, but uh, his thing is Texoma, and he's from what I've seen from Steve, uh, he continues to catch really nice stripers on fly on the lake and 
He's doing the smallmouth thing. This year has been really spectacular for uh, smallmouth from everything I can tell on Texoma. And of course, if you've stuck with me over all these years, you know I, I do like um, smallmouth bass. Stripers in general on Texoma have, have seemed to have gotten bigger overall and, and the, the fly fishing record for um, the striper on Texoma has gone from 8 pounds this, this year. It got updated to 13 pounds, just about 13 I think it was. And you can uh, find some really nice stripers these days. And I think with the, the new setup I had for fishing the jetties, it might just work for this. It might be a little heavy for a lot of the fish, but a few of those big ones should work out just about right. Of course, I'm going to have to be pulling it behind the kayak, but that's not a problem. You can find Steve Holland's head at www.flywaterangling.com. Be sure you check in with him. While we're staying in freshwater in Texas, of course, it's, you can't get past Alvandito down there in the Austin area. He fishes a lot of different places, um, and he looks. He spends his summers, parts of his summers, in, in Colorado. And if you look at Alvin's website, which is actually his name.com, it's alvandito.com. Um, and then he's got the Facebook presence, a couple of Facebook pages. Um, you'll see that he has really nailed the brown trout in Colorado. There are some beautiful specimens, beautiful photographs on there. And uh, just don't don't pass by Alvin Dito if you're if you're looking for a, a guide in Central Texas. He's a really good cat, and he really really just laid back and has a great time. I've been out with him a couple of times. Um, let's see what else we've got. We'll move over to saltwater. There's a uh, uh, company called Real Fly and at the uh, Canyon Lake, city of Canyon Lake, which is basically the Guadalupe River, and right there at the Guadalupe. And they they have a saltwater and freshwater presence, which is a good transition. I see on their their photographs they have plenty of redfish action, and then the freshwater, some small smallmouth bass on the Guadalupe. And you can find Real Fly at www.realfly.net. And they are a lot like uh, some of the other guys these days. They use um, they use Facebook a lot more to update than they do actually their website. It's it's I think it's in the long run not that great of an idea, but that's just the way it works. The easiest for these guys, and, and you know to keep it easy for these guys is uh, is you know they don't want to spend all their time on a keyboard. Keyboard never caught a fish. They want to get out there, take care of their clients, and show you what's going on. If you look at the uh, Orvis guide, I call him Orvis guide. He's just he's a guy that, that has the Orvis endorsement. Rob Woodruff, you know, he's he's a prominent figure in North Texas, and he fishes a lot in the East Texas. He's really actually East North Texas. Fishes a lot um, in the lakes over there, including the the warm the cooling lakes in the winter time, um, the cooling lakes for power plants, and his beat is Beaver's Bend Broken Bow and even now uh, during this hot time of the year he's bringing plenty of rainbow trout to hand for his clients and doing well there. Um, you've got to check him out and it's flyfish, flyfish in fork, flyfishingfork.com flyfishingfork.com so check him out the guy is a really good character and he uh, uh, he knows his entomology, teaches those classes, teaches casting. He's a well-rounded and super smart individual. Now, as we move towards the coast, the guides are starting to ramp up for September and October. I see a lot of redfish on different Facebook pages, and uh, you'll see redfish action. Scott Sparrow, Scott Null, Eric Glass, they're all showing redfish. And, and you know, as, as we work into September and October, the schooling begins for the move to deeper water. And, of course, um, things things get into flux and and it's really a, a optimal time to be on the coast the only thing we come across on the coast of course is is potential for hurricanes as as the heat settles in and, and creates instability on the gulf uh, you can visit i saw um, eric glass and specifically on his his facebook that he's into a lot of different things over the last few months snook caught tarpon caught and redfish caught so captain eric glass.com is someplace you would go if you're looking for a guide to get you into some unusual things down in south texas on the gulf coast 
I think it's a good good place to end the guide reports. You know, I, I'm just going to glean this stuff off the internet until you guys, uh, you guides, have received my information and kind of had time to uh, look at that and see if you want to participate directly and and actually write something up for me. Um, that email will go out later this week. Uh, it keeps getting put off due to being busy with work and things like that, but. Um, I think it's an opportunity for any guy to pipe in and, and get, get one specific focus on them on this thing I'm creating here with, uh, with uh, guide reporting in, on fly fishing in Texas. Um, you're obviously going to do a lot better um, looking at Facebook than you are at these guys' websites. So you can search for these guys on Facebook and, and like them or add them and that way you can follow their posts. It's a good way to have that stuff feed right into yours and then you can you can actually get updated as they update. Um, as I said earlier, you know, we're going to end with a tip for, uh, for today. And uh, this one comes from direct use and basically direct rescue. I was using a uh, a Lampson Guru reel, and on the I guess we went out early, you know, early in the day or for part of the day on the first day we were there, and then the second day when I got my reel out, uh, eight it's it's on an eight weight, and uh, the reel the drag felt just like reeling, so the basically the drag was locked and reeling was just as hard as the drag was. Um, well, a guy on board had. Uh, Saved me basically with this stuff. He goes, he goes, hey man, I got this spray. It's called Real Magic. It's from Walmart. Blah blah blah. I was like, man, let me go. I don't have any choice. I gotta try it. So what I did was I used this stuff called Real Magic, R E A L Magic, and sprayed it. And he, I could, it was, it was also locked together. He managed to separate, just pop off like they do the uh, spool and spray. I sprayed some of that into that little hole that uh, the spool locks into and then I actually loosened up the drag knob and sprayed some on the outside of that and it worked like new. It worked better than new so, and the drags it wasn't affected or anything like that. So try real magic, R-E-A-L magic. Uh, keep a can of this with you. This is like for, you know, usually for, for fly fishing reels there's not a lot of mechanical things that can go wrong but if there's something like this and you need a rescue and you don't have an extra drag system to, to sit down and install on your reel or do it when you get home, this will get you out of a jam for sure. So Real Magic looks like it's made by Blakemore and uh, it's not, not terribly cheap but you shouldn't, this is like the last resort, you shouldn't want to have to use this very often. They, they claim it's for making lines, lose memory and all that stuff but Real Magic, good stuff. I really appreciate your watching. I hope you got a good update yesterday on the Monday morning sidewalk. And um, what we're going to do, like I said, is, is, is eventually I'm thinking that uh, uh, things are changing just a little bit. So stay on board and see what happens. Thanks for watching. Have a great week and tune in next week.